know we're starting a series this month called Fight Back. Fight Back. Amen. So I'm going to be going over several things that's going to expose the enemy. It's going to expose some things that you didn't even realize was the enemy that has been working in your life to try and trip you up, to try and mess you up, to put you in bondage. See, I had someone ask me, can a Christian, can a Christian who is saved, believer, born again, can they be in bondage? Can they be possessed? No, you can't be possessed, but baby, you can sure be oppressed. And I'm going to give you some scriptures to show you that. But most importantly, I'm going to show you whose you are and who we serve. And that is our God. And he is surely a good, good father and a faithful God we serve. Amen. Amen. So after you walk out of here today, you're going to be on guard because you're going to know what to look for and you're going to recognize it and nip it in the bud before it ever ever makes its way into your heart, your mind, and into your atmosphere of your home or your job or in your head. Amen? Amen? So before we start, you know what I do. So everybody put your hand on your head and we just say, Father, clear our mind of every obstacle, of every distraction, of everything that would call our attention away from you. And Lord, right now, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the word that you're about to break in this place. Thank you, Father. And I receive every single word that you have for me. In Jesus' name, prepare me for battle. Amen? Amen. Turn around and tell your neighbor right now. Say, I'm about to get prepared for battle. So this is the first of Fight Back series, and I want to tell you what today's title is, and it is Fight One More Round. Turn around and tell somebody right now, say Fight One More Round, and then turn around to somebody else, your other neighbor, and tell them, say, don't quit now, keep fighting. Don't quit now, keep fighting. Amen? Amen. There's a story of a fight that took place in New Orleans. And I don't know if y'all know of this guy or heard of him, but in my studies, I found this and I found this quote, which is what I built the sermon around because it was so inspiring to me and so relevant even in my life and in my walk. Um, but on September 7th, 1892, that was a long time ago, y'all. Is anybody here that was born in 1892? Okay, good. That would be a miracle right there. But on September 7th, in 1892 in New Orleans, New Louisiana, a boxer named Gentleman Jim Corbett. Gentleman Jim Corbett. Has anybody heard this story? Y'all get ready because y'all going to be quoting this one. He entered the ring with arguably the greatest boxer of all time. He was a man of faith, Gentleman Jim Corbett. He was a man of faith, faithful to his church. And John L. Sullivan was the last heavyweight champion of bare-knuckle boxing. I mean, these were men, men. They were getting in the ring, no gloves on, gloves off, amen? He was the last heavyweight champion in bare-glove boxing, but he also was the first heavyweight champion in glove boxing. In 50 fights, people, he was undefeated, 50 fights, but then came 51, okay? Then came 51. The only fight that Sullivan ever lost was the one to Gentleman Jim Corbett. He knocked him out in the 21st round. And Gentleman Jim Corbett became the heavyweight champion of the world. And when he was interviewed after, they asked him, what made you keep going? Because he looked like he was about to get out of the fight. The guy was so confident. And I want to tell you something right now. The enemy has been watching you. And his tricks and his low blows and his things that he has done to you that has thrown you off guard and even tripped you up and made you feel like you're about to quit. You're about to lose the fight. You're weary and well-doing. He's about to find out that you ain't down and out for the count yet. Amen? Amen? We're getting back up and we're going to fight one more round. That was his saying. He said, because all I kept thinking about is if I could just fight, I'm going to fight one more, one more. See, a lot of times we get overwhelmed because we look at the big picture. We look at what God told us. We know what we want and what we desire to do for God. But you look at the big picture and then you stumble and then you fall. And then you trip up. And then the enemy taps you on the shoulder and begins to intimidate you and mock you. And he might even send some people 
to mock you and say, see, I told you so. You ain't got what it takes, right? You're not going to be successful. You're always going to be this or that. You're never going to overcome. You're never going to succeed. That is the voice of the enemy. But I want to encourage you today, and I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and give him a fist bump and say, fight one more round. Fight one more round. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Before we even get started, take your phone out. Share this speed. Share this this message today. I'm going to hold you guys for about 30 minutes, but I'm going to encourage you and inspire you. Y'all are going to walk out of here like Rocky. You're going to have your head up, your chest poked out, ready to fight one more round. All right? All right. So limit your moving. Be respectful of the house of God. Amen? Be respectful of your neighbor. Amen. Turn your ringers off on your phone and let's just zone in. Can I have your attention for about 35 minutes? We good? We good? Because y'all need this word. Tell your neighbors, say, pay attention. You need this word. Amen. Amen. I think the Apostle Paul actually would have used that same motto. And he kind of alluded to that when he told Timothy, his protege, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, 4, 7 in the New Living Translation, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. I'm going to say that one more time. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Shout finished. I have remained faithful. Tell your neighbor, say I'm remaining faithful. Do I have any fighters in this place today? If you're watching online, if you're a fighter, I want you to put a little thumbs up or a fist bump. Amen. Every fighter, every single fighter has a day that they feel like quitting. Every single fighter has a moment in their life. Every Christian, let me just change it. Every Christian has a moment in their life that they feel like giving up. They feel like quitting. It's like they just can't get ahead. They just can't get their bearings straight. Y'all know what I mean? You're knocked off balance. Every single person in this place and every person watching, including the person that's speaking to you today, has had a moment and an opportunity to just quit. Put my hands down, take off the gloves, and stay down. TKO. Amen? But the best fighters know this. The way you win is you just keep fighting. Just keep fighting, baby. Just keep fighting. Amen? I know you feel like quitting today, some of you that are tuned in. That's why I know this is an on-time word. And I was even fought today getting here. Many of y'all know Seth has been fighting some stuff, and he's about to have a really major surgery Tuesday. Keep him in your prayers, please. Keep me in your prayer because this mama's brain is like, man, I am fighting, though. I'm not about to quit. I'm not about to give up. And I know I've watched my son weep and cry. Even this morning before I was leaving, and Seth's not a crier, but he was in so much pain, he was just weeping and crying out. And I just thought, man, it makes my heart hurt because I can't fix it. There's some things you're going through and some things you've been frustrated or even hurting over or crying over and crying out to God that you can't fix it. You've tried everything, haven't you? But you can't fix it. But I know a God who is still in control. Amen? So get up and fight one more round. I'm going to encourage you today, just stay. Just stand. Just keep standing. Just get back in the ring, even if you don't feel like it. Get back in the ring because you're not getting in by yourself. God's going to fight with you. Amen? Amen. Paul was writing these words, and I spoke about him last week because he's such an inspiration and encouraging person to read after when you read the letters that he wrote, multiple letters, and most of those were written from a prison. The things we read that encourage us, that give us instruction, direction, he wrote them from a prison. See, many of you that are watching or that are here today, y'all have a record, and you feel like because everybody's told you that, that you're down and out for the count. You're just disqualified. You just messed up too bad. You know, who can use, especially God, Who can see purpose and worth in someone that's got a record? Someone that just keeps blowing it over and over. I'm here to tell you, God can use you. The the scripture I read earlier was written from a prison cell while he sat on death row, waiting his execution. And here he is encouraging his protege, Timothy. 
So I know you feel like quitting, but I want to tell you one more time, like Paul, I want to just say fight one more round. He said, I fought the good fight. So he's writing these words. And in the same thing, Paul also wrote this, 2 Corinthians 12. Same Paul wrote this, 7 and 8. He said, but to keep me from being puffed up with pride. I want you to, to listen to me. This is somebody that is that's a great chief apostle. He's wrote most of the New Testament from prison. And here he is, he's saying, I want to tell you about my life. Let me testify to you and encourage you for just a minute, church. He said this, but to keep me from getting puffed up with pride because God has showed me so many awesome, amazing things. I was given a painful physical ailment. Does that sound like God? Follow me. A thorn in my flesh is what it is called and referred to in King James. A thorn in my flesh, which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me up, to tell me to quit, to tell me to give up, to remind me I ain't got a hundred of what it takes. Amen? To beat me up and keep me from being proud. Three times, everybody hold your fingers up. Three. Three times. Say three times. Three times, the chief apostle, this great man of faith. Three times. He pleaded with God. He pleaded with him, pleaded with the Lord, take it from me, please. God, remove this thorn from my flesh. I want to tell you what happened because I can relate to this. He would leave a church service. He would be preaching a powerful service, the power of God fall. He would see people healed, people set free, and then he would even see people raised from the dead. God used him mightily. Don't that sound like a mighty man of faith? Then on the way home, he would be reminded the same God that healed, the same God that used him to speak a word of faith and encouragement still had a thorn in his flesh. Why didn't God remove that thorn? I'm sure he asked that so many times because he said he, pre he prayed, he pleaded three times for God to remove it, and he still didn't. No one could see. I'm coming at you. No one could see what was going on, the battle on the inside, because they judged the greatness on the outside. Baby, everybody has a battle on the inside. I said everybody. I, I don't care if you're struggling with addiction, you're struggling with porn, you're struggling with your family, with your finances, with just mental stability. Everybody has a battle on the inside that you cannot see on the outside. Amen? It's amazing how good you can be at fixing others' problems. You can tell them exactly what to do. You can give them instruction. You can counsel them. And then you can't even fix your own. I can say, I know what that feels like today. I, I can encourage you, but it's really hard to encourage my son today. As he was weeping and angry. Not angry at God. Angry, though. Angry. Have you been there? Can, he, can anybody relate? Are y'all going to be real today? Good. I'm glad to see I ain't alone. Amen? If I wouldn't hold this mic, Austin, I'd raise two hands like you. And my feet, if I could do that and not fall over. But the discouraging and conflicting part of ministry, for all of you who aspire to be used and you think that you're, you can't, you're unworthy, you're disqualified, you're not good enough, you don't know the Scripture enough, how about just tell where you've been? Can you do that? Can you just show your scars? Can you just be real for a minute and say, let me tell you about my testimony. Let me tell you what God delivered me from. Now, I ain't all the way there yet. I ain't crossed the finish line, but I'm still coming. I'm here to fight one more round. Amen? So the discouraging and conflicting part of ministry is God will use you. He will use me. He has used me to pray for someone who receives their healing when your son hasn't, when your wife's dying of cancer, when your marriage is falling apart. He will use you to counsel someone else. How ironic, how ironic that I can help you get rid of your thorn, but no matter how hard I pray, I can't get rid of mine. Come on. The conflection, the conflict is enough to make you just quit. But I don't have any quitters in this house today. I said I don't have any quitters in this house today. The moment you got up and put your feet on the floor, you said I'm ready to fight one more round. It didn't mean you wasn't tired. It didn't mean your spirit was not crushed, bruised, and broken. You did not mean that you were not bloody. You might even be walking with a limp, but I'm telling you, you got out, 
you're here today, you're watching today, your your spirit is saying, I'm here to fight one more round. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And yet Paul endured the hardship and he stayed the course and kept his faith in the God who did not answer his own prayer. What enabled Paul? This is what I ask. This is my question I pondered. What enabled Paul to press ahead when he was being assaulted so viciously, viciously, lied on, persecuted, imprisoned falsely? How could he remain to focus on the kingdom assignment that God had given him and maintain such a positive, victorious attitude, encouraging others, encouraging Timothy? How could he do that from a prison cell knowing he was going to be beheaded the very next day for his faith. How could he do that? Could you do that? Some of you lose your faith because you just mad at your girlfriend broke up. Some of you just lose your faith because somebody lied on you at work. Some of you just lose your faith because you didn't get your check in time to get your nails done. Some of you lose your faith over the silliest things. I want to ask you, is that really faith or is it selfishness? Because see, faith is selfless. Faith is saying, not my will be done, God, but your will be done. No matter the cost, no matter the price, your will be done. How is it that Paul never, ever surrendered to the thorn in his flesh? How did he not get disillusioned, Jason? How did that happen? How did that happen? How does that happen when someone walks off from you, when you've devoted yourself to and you've done nothing, and they walk off? How does that happen when you've been betrayed, but you were not the betrayer? How do you not get disillusioned with the thorns, with an S on the end, thorns in your flesh? How do you keep going? How do you keep going, Rose? How do you keep going, Bruce? Will you lose your wife in an untimely manner? Will you walk in and find your husband, the man you depended on to cover you? He's gone. He's passed away. Untimely. Unexpected. See, if you can prepare for the blow, you can put your fist up. But when you put your fist down because you think there's not a fight to go on, the enemy can cold cock you and knock you down on your behind. But it takes a fighter to get back up. Turn around and tell somebody right now, I'm looking at a champion. Come on. See, here's the thing, like Paul, let me just give you some words of advice from something I learned from a leader. Here it is. It's easy to do the right thing if you make your mind up to do the right thing before you ever are faced with doing the wrong thing. Do you have a made-up mind? Or are you unstable? Are you always going to and fro, whichever the way the wind blows you? Trying to get the approval of somebody. Trying to get somebody to stay. So you're going to become somebody else to make them stay. Come on. I want you to listen today because I want you to be set free today. I want to empower you to get back in the ring and fight one more round. So now Paul is standing at the end of his life. And I love the words he wrote to this spiritual son that he mentored, his protege, the one that was going to carry on after him, the one he poured his heart into, the one he taught to disciple who he discipled first. He's standing at the end of his life. He asked Timothy for two things, a coat. Bring me my coat, I'm cold. But bring me some paper, son, so I can write you a letter of goodbye. And here he is, about to be executed. He said this, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I didn't quit. I felt like it some days. But I didn't quit, Timothy. I didn't quit. Don't you quit either, son. On the days you feel like giving up, don't quit on your worst day. You'll regret it on your best day. Because it will get better. So here he is. And he's writing Timothy some of the last letters he will ever write before he crosses over from this life and to receive his reward, the champion's reward. See, here's the thing. We all run a race. I'm not running your race. You ain't running mine. Stay in your lane and I'll stay in mine. But let me tell you, here's the thing. You run a race, and a lot of times we 
We equate it with like running a race here, like there's only one winner. Uh Uh-uh, baby. It ain't one winner in this world when you are doing a kingdom assignment. Everybody wins if you just keep fighting one more round. Everybody wins if you just don't quit on your worst day. Everybody wins if you just keep pushing through it. Amen? In the Greek, the words fault and fight... They are pronounced, y'all bear with me, because this is like the Bible names that I do not even know. So I'm going to put some uh, Southern spin, I'm sure, on it. All you people watching that know how to speak Greek, don't judge me harsh. Agonetzo, agonetzo. Y'all can name your next child that. Go ahead. This word means a struggle, a fight. Struggle, a fight. A combat, not just a fight, a combat. A fierce competition. I had fought the good fight. I had a fierce competition, Timothy. It was hard. It was a combat. It was a struggle. I strived. It's another word it means. Strive. It's wrestling. It's where we get the word agony from. Agony. I fought a good fight. Agony. Yeah. Does that sound like a good thing? Does that sound like, we are the champions, my friend? I know that was like Pat Benatar, so I don't know. Anyway, does that sound like a victorious thing? I fought a good fight. I'm in agony, Timothy. But I'm fighting. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting, Elsa. I'm not quitting. By using this word, Paul tells us that some of his ministry has been a real struggle. Difficult, fierce, agonizing. Yet Paul never quit. He never quit. He stayed in the fight. He stayed in the ring. And he was faithful to his call. These are the sentiments of a man who lived his life with no regrets. I'm not talking about when he was Saul. He was the accuser. He was the one that persecuted the Christians. I'm talking about when he became Paul. When he became who God called him to be. I fought a good fight, regardless of all the others who have dropped out of the fight, who have quit the race. He said, I stayed, I stood, I endured, I fought, Timothy. That proclamation has the sense of victory and exhilaration, and he is proud of the contest as he sits on death row that he engaged in. He said, I kept the faith. The Greek word for kept is terio. It is the same Greek word used to depict a watch of soldiers who are positioned to protect something important. I kept the faith, Timothy. I guarded it. I protected it. The job of these soldiers was to stand guard and to keep watch. They were to be faithful. Everybody shout faithful. And committed, shout committed, to their charge of keeping watch regardless, regardless regardless of the kind of assault or the number of attackers they might encounter. This is a word Paul chose to use when he says, I have kept, I protected, I have defended, I have guarded vigilantly the faith, Timothy. And I showed you how. Even though I encountered difficulties and challenges, I never surrendered. I never quit. I stayed And I stood and I endured my post, everything that came against me. Through it all, Paul kept watch over the mission and the message God gave him. And he kept the faith and he did not let culture water it down. Come on, listen. He did not try to be politically correct. He did not sugarcoat it so it wouldn't offend anyone or step on anyone's toes. He kept the faith. Why did he keep the faith? He carried the gospel all the way to the finish line. And now when he's being martyred, being beheaded, he still is holding tight to it. As he writes to him and he says, make sure everybody knows, I fought a good fight, Timothy. I kept the faith, but I finished the race. I finished it. I know there's a crown waiting for me. There's something that's about to be mine, and you're going to get it too. Just keep fighting. Fight one more round, Timothy, on the days you feel like quitting. Fight more, one more round. When they lie on you, when you're weary and it don't look like you're making any progress and you're fighting really hard, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Tell your neighbors, say, fight one more round. 
Tell your other neighbor, say, don't quit now. The last part of that scripture, Paul knew if he quit, he wouldn't be quitting alone. I want to tell you, you cross the finish line with people, and that's the best way to cross the finish line. You also quit. And if you quit, you will not quit alone. There will be many people like Paul who are following him that can quit on that same day too. Timothy and all the others, they would have quit if Paul would have quit. That's what made Paul get back up and fight one more round. And guess what? It's exactly what gets me up. Anything I've ever gone through, all I kept thinking, everything inside of you, you know, they say a amoeba who has no brain cell will move away from pain. So it's natural to run. Nobody will just stand there and let somebody hurt you or hit you, right? Nobody. Just stand there and take it. But what got me back in the ring, what got me back up here in front of you, giving you a word every Sunday, I might have cried my way all the way to church and felt like quitting. But you know what I did? I saw my children. I saw my grandchildren. And I saw you. I saw you. And I said, I can't quit now. I have to fight a good fight. I have to run the race. I have to finish. I have to finish well. And I have to keep the faith. Because somebody's got to show them how. Somebody. Connie, you're showing them. You're showing them. You're showing them. That's what gets me back on my feet when I'm weary, when I want to give up on those days. I pick myself up and I climb right back in the ring. I stand right back up here or I'll pray because I must finish the race and fight one more round. Baby, it's called legacy. It's called legacy because I don't want to leave this life and I want you to think the same thing. See, you may think you have nothing to offer. You're still breathing. You got a lot to offer. There's people that you're going to rescue out of the same pit you climbed out of. Whether it's addiction, whether it's divorce, whether it's abuse, whether it's molestation, whether it's rape, whatever it is, you climbed out. You proved it because you're right here today. You're breathing. You're a survivor. You're, you're not a victim. You're a survivor. You're a champion. You're a fighter. See, I don't want to leave this life without leaving some part of me behind so that everybody knows I was here. That means I'm going to leave it better than I might have messed up. I, I, you might have messed up, but that don't mean you don't have to stay there. Get back up. Show them how to overcome. Get back up and fight one more round. Some sort of sign is what I want to leave for my children and my grandchildren that know I stayed the course. I held tightly to my faith. Even when I went through it, even when I went through a storm and I stumbled, I fought another round. Even when I was weary, I didn't quit. I didn't quit. Even when I didn't understand, I stayed, I stood, and I continued to put my trust in the God, the one who would welcome me, who would congratulate me as I crossed the finish line. That's who's waiting on you. That's why you keep running. And when I draw my last breath, I want to hear him say, well done. High five, daughter. You did that. You did that. Amen. Give the Lord a praise right now. Amen. See, it may not be pretty when you cross the finish line. You may be dragging yourself across. You may be bloody and bruised from the battle you fought. But just keep going. Just get up, fight one more round. Just keep going. You may not run. You may not walk. You may have to crawl. But just keep going. Just keep going. Amen? Just keep showing up to the fight, just like my mama did. My mama is legally blind, and she gets dressed and looks beautiful. I don't know how she does it. Gets dressed, looks beautiful, shows up to church on Sunday and gives God praise. Yeah, my son gives God praise. Are you giving God praise? Or are you holding back because you're mad because you're in a fight? I I'm asking you, are you? Did you show up and bring a praise, or did you show up and say, what you got for me today? Not what did I bring for you today. What do you have for me, God? Amen? Amen. So I kept showing up, and you showed up today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the greatest example I could say, and I'm getting close to finishing right now. Close to closing. 
Even Jesus struggled with finishing. I can prove it to you. In the garden. In the garden. The night before he knew he was about to be arrested. The night before he knew. He knew that someone he loved, his friend, had betrayed him. He knew he was about to give his life for people that would spit on him, curse him, did not know who he was. They didn't recognize him. Some of you have been holding on to a lack of recognition, a lack of approval, whether it was your daddy, your mama, your auntie, your grandmother, or your ex. Some of you have been holding on to that, not understanding. Jesus went through exactly what you went through. It's called betrayal, baby. And if you lay there and hold on to that, you will fall and you will die there. You will never know what it feels like to get back up and just fight one more round. Just fight one more round. Jesus prayed in the garden. Daddy, can I get out of this? Please. I don't want to do this. It's going to hurt. Please, is there, is there another way? Can, can I avoid the cross? None of you can avoid the cross. The first thing he said, Jesus said to his disciples, can you pick up your cross? Everybody has a cross. I'm looking at men and women in here that y'all have got a story. The people have negated you. They have judged you by your story. And I, let me apologize. Some of them were beautiful religious church folk. That looked at you because you messed up. I wonder, I wonder if they were the ones, you know, it was church people that lied on Jesus, that arrested him, that justified crucifixion, but it was all for the glory of God. Amen? It was all for the glory of God. So here he is in the garden and he's praying and it says three times he asked, three times, there's that number again, three times he asked, Please let me avoid the cross. Is there another way? Please let this cup pass from me. But finally he says what I've said and what I pray that you learn to say. Finally he said, not my, my will be done. Not my will be done. Not, not my way. Not my will, but thy will be done. Thy will be done. And that was that. He accepted his faith. He accepted the cross, but I love the thing that he said, the last words he said on the cross. What did he say? It is finished. He finished well, didn't he? He finished well. Amen. It may be harder than you thought. You may be tired. It may be uncomfortable. It may be painful at times. You may cry yourself to sleep or on the way to church, but just keep fighting. Just keep fighting. You may want to quit your job or quit school or quit your marriage. Just keep fighting. I refuse to quit today. I want you to tell your neighbor right now, say, I refuse to quit. I'm getting myself up. I'm getting back in the ring, and I'm going to fight one more round. One more. Everybody get up on your feet right now. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to quote Gentleman Jim Corbett, the guy I started out with. His, his thing that they were interviewing him about, he said this in his book about that fight in particular. He said, when your arms are so tired, has anybody in here arms been tired? You've been weary from fighting? You're exhausted? Amen? You're discouraged? Maybe disillusioned. When your arms are so tired that you can hardly lift your hands to guard yourself, Fight one more round. Let me hear you. I'm going to read that again. And when I point at you, I want you to help me say it. When your arms are so tired that you can hardly lift your hands to guard yourself, fight one more round. When your nose is bleeding and your eyes are black, you can barely see through them. And you are so tired that you wish your opponent would just crack you one on the jaw, knock you out, and put you dead asleep. Fight one more round round because the man who fights one more round always 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 wins the fight amen 
Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Are you encouraged today? See, you've been feeling like giving up and God met you here today. Amen. Quit looking at your circumstances, how bad they are. Turn my lights down for me. Stop looking at it. Stop talking about it. I'm going to be talking about that next time I speak to y'all because I'm going to talk about the next one I've got. And let me tell you, it's going to be good because I was in between. Should I do this one? Should I do that one? I don't know. They both spoke to me so deep, but I know they're going to minister to you. So make sure you show up and get that word because you need to know how to fight, right? Because the enemy don't fight fair. But many of you have been so close to giving up. You've even said this week, what's the use? My best ain't even good enough. Come on, I'm talking to you today. You're judging your current race you're running. The steps you're taking, they're ordered by God. You're coming out, but it's a process to come out of what you've been in. It's a process. Don't be like someone else and talk about the thorn all the time and not realize that God is going to use you mightily to help other people heal. And then you know what? It makes the pain worth it. When you could turn your pain into ministry, your pain is never wasted. Get up and fight one more round. Get up and tell your testimony more. Don't don't get down because you just messed up some and you got people looking at you dead in your face like, duh. There's somebody that's out there that needs your testimony. They're crying their self to sleep tonight, wondering if they should take their own life because you have the hope in your mouth. Open your mouth. Get back in the ring. Say something. Fight one more round. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We've come to the part of the service that I love so much because it's giving you the opportunity to say, God, I can't do this on my own. I felt like quitting. I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm cried. I'm bruised. I'm bloody. I'm broken. I don't know if I can do it. If you're in this place today or you're watching today and you are lost and away from God, you feel like you've just blown it so bad. I want you to know these words that are reaching your ears and reaching your spirit and your heart right now that are touching you in the deepest, darkest, secret place. The place reserved for God alone. His love can wash over you in a moment. And that's what you're feeling even right now. That's grace. See, it's not just my words, but it's the living word. It's the living water. That's what you feel right now. Stirring inside of you. It's called purpose. It's called purpose. I want to tell you, if I showed up for nobody today, but just you, God wanted you to hear these words. He's like, son, don't quit now. Son, keep going. I believe in you. I see you. I don't judge you for your past. I died so that you would live and you could have a future because I am a good father. I want to bless you. I want to bless you so you can be a blesser. Right now, if I'm speaking to you and you're lost and you're away from God, reach your hand up really high. We're going to pray the prayer of salvation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All over this place, God met you today. You're so important to him. Don't let anybody convince you that you're not. He loves you so much, so much. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Put your hand over your heart, every eye still closed. And even if you're saved, pray this prayer with me right now. Father, I come to you. I surrender all of my mistakes. I made a mess of my life. I've caused pain. And, Lord, I've been hurt. But, Father, right now, I lay it at the cross. I lay all my disappointment, all my sins, all my shame. And I look up to you, Father. I fix my eyes on you, my Redeemer. Let your grace cover me today, Father. God, call me and I hear you and I will come. 
Lord, I will share my story of what you delivered me from. Because therefore, there is no more condemnation in those who love the Lord. And Lord, I love you with my whole heart. Be Lord of my life. Lead me, guide me, and I will follow. And I will let everyone know what you have brought me through and brought me from for the rest of my days. I want you to shout something real loud right now for the enemy to hear. No shame. Say it loud. No shame. Praise God. Put your hands together right now. Those of you who are watching, thank you for tuning in. Join us next Sunday.